Sandy Sandler, welcome to the show. How are you today? I am so wonderful. It's good to see you. It's amazing to see you too. I am very excited to dive into today's conversation. We've had a little bit of a chat off air and I have a good feeling this is going to be a really valuable one. But before we do dive into the deep end of this conversation, can you give the listeners a bit of context about who you are, what it is that you do? Yeah. So I am uh, Sandy Sandler from the States, and I am here to talk about Sacred She and about the masculine and feminine energies. I have an international women's group and where I'm essentially helping women get back into their bodies, get back into who they are primally in that space of the, the feminine and the masculine. I do work with couples as well. And it really this all started about 10 years ago when I had an intervention with Tony Robbins. I was in yet another failed relationship, but extremely successful in business. And I never realized when I raised my hand that it, I would four hours later essentially castrate myself, so to speak, because I didn't realize how much I was showing up as a guy. Very masculine. And I also didn't realize that that was very trauma-based. It was very survival-based. And I know we're going to you know, dive into that. And so... Uh, like I like to do everything. I think our mess is our message. Our test is our testimony. And I was so shocked by by what was being told to me because I had already, I had left an abusive relationship years before and I did the typical traditional therapy route. You know, and I, if I'm going to do something, the masculine in me, I'm going to do it and make sure I, I nail it, right? That's my, that's that's the masculine energy. Let's do it. And so I was like three times a week in therapy. You know, I I started I started another business. I didn't date during those two years going through that that the healing of that relationship. And as soon as I started dating again, and this is no lie, my friends can can attest for this. I ended up in another relationship, very similar, like same song, different record. It was just more covert abuse. Yeah. And my dear friend, who sacred she is named after, she and she has passed. And her name is Rachel. I always like to talk about Rach. She looked at me, she's from Australia, and I can't do her accent, but I always try. She looked at me one night, you know, after like a six hour sesh, and for all the women here, they'll understand this. She looked at me. There may have been some wine involved too, I'll admit it. She's like, Sandy, this is not who you are. It's not who you are. You have to get out of your head and get into your body. And this is about a pattern. I'm like, pattern? She goes, you're such a victim in this. Don't you see that you keep showing up? I was like, all right. Well, because of, uh, you know, because of that, yeah. She goes, you need to go see Tony Robbins. And that's what it was. So this is like a, and, you know, and I, and so I did, I did. I listened to her. I already had obviously a relationship with Tony when I was 19. I bought some of the stuff online. I'm 52 years old and I, it helped me. I say online, it wasn't online. I'm sorry, on TV, <laughs> it was TV. And that helped me actually heal from an eating disorder that, you know, tradition was like in and out of treatment centers all through high school and that it was around mindset. So I wanted to make sure I said that because of the nature. I've listened to some of your episodes and I understand your audience. Well, I mean, I'm, I am your audience, you know, I'm like your ideal audience. So anyway, so this is not an endorsement for Tony per se, because I've moved away from Tony's teachings. But what I needed in that moment, the masculine within me, that that tough broad that, you know, I, I wanted to be loved so deeply, but I didn't really need a man. And I was raised that way. You know, my daddy left when, when I'm from South Carolina, by the way. So you'll hear my Southern twang come out. My dad left when I was 12. And in that moment when he left, it was like childhood ended. And I, you know, did a paper route with my mom. I mean, that's why I say I'm a serial entrepreneur. I mean, I was like paper routing to pay, to pay our bills and, you know, all these things. And so my mom was, was, and rightfully so, she was bitter. And I, I loved my dad, but he was gone for a while. And he now is up in heaven with Rachel and I love him. And I can effectively blame him and my mom for how I was raised because I have a work ethic like an ox. I'm very resourceful super hyper vigilant. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I guess I'm coming to you now. Um, actually, like, as I mentioned to you, I'm literally when we're done, I'm closing the computer, I'm hopping in my Jeep and I'm heading out after basically a 10 day solitude retreat, self retreat. And because I've always wanted to know why do I do what I do? If I see, uh, areas where, there's a hiccup, so to speak. I want to know why. So I'm coming to you really understanding trauma even more because what I believe is the last 5% really gets healed in partnership. And I'll just like 
tap into that for a second because what I mean is, is that your intimate relationships are the ones, as we all know, are going to trigger the hell out of us. They're, they're going to trigger us. Most people, though, tap out. What, what we like to teach is that for sacred union, you tap in and you understand like you learn to understand the other person. You learn to understand their childhood. You understand attachment styles. You understand why they are what they are. But the brain wants to keep us safe, not happy. It's going to want to make them the villain, right? So we can be the hero or the victim. And sometimes the hero, quite frankly, is actually worse than the villain, so to speak. And, uh, you know, our teachers have really taught us, I know it's fascinating, to there's three stages of connection. And that first stage is like that baby love, baby connection, super primal, like what about me? That stage two, if we all lived in this space, it would be a much more beautiful world where it's a mano a mano. You know, when you did this, I felt this. And you're there, It's it, but it's depolarizing from a sexual place because if you're all, always just everything's just copacetic. There's no, okay, there's no, I was like, there's no fuck in that. There's no fuck in that if there's no polarity, and, right? And then third stage is what we believe is that interdependent, um, that space where you, and it doesn't sound super sexy, but you you know what who they are, you know who they are and their relationship to source or God, universe, creator, whatever that is for you. To me, it's God. And if you if you see them out of line, so so to speak, and this is, by the way, the way I, I coach a mentor. I only have friends who love me this way and then definitely partners too. And is somebody who loves me so much that if they see that I'm out of integrity, if they see my heart's closed, for example, that they will call me out in love. Like they really want me. So from a partnership standpoint, though, what I, what I have learned, and a lot of this has really happened in the last five years since my husband and I've been together, is we have been in this 5%, you know, highly triggered. We got married in 90 days after we met, met each other, which was, oh, sorry, 111 days. We were like 90 days and then it was, it was, we eloped. It was wild. I don't necessarily recommend that for people, quite frankly, which is why I teach how to date intentionally in the work I do. Because I mean, getting to know each other's nervous system, what triggers them helps you love them better. Right. So that stage three is that is that is more of an interdependent. I'm responsible for your nervous system. At first, I'm responsible for my nervous system. He's responsible for his, but we're also responsible for the other. And that I didn't know that 10 years ago. Tony's teaching isn't that. I mean, Tony's great for skimming things off the top. I just did virtual UPW. I actually went and ended up working with Tony for two years and did a deep dive after that. Because Elliot, I had never in my life, and I mean that in my life at that at that time, at 40, 42, been in the presence of someone who could cut through my bullshit. And what I mean is like, he's just like, you know, and I was, but I also was very hungry and ready. And so I, I've been trained by the best. So one of my favorite things to do, which I mentioned before we came on, is I like to parachute into someone's someone's existence, so to speak. And I love to popcorn style mentor because I, I, I he trained me to know how to do these interventions. And it's fascinating because everything is a pattern and trauma is real, whether it's a little T, you know, or a big T. And so to really get to know those things is so important. In my sacred she world, we call it bake a cake. I really believe that inherently all men are good. I really do believe all men are, all men are good men. And yeah, anyway, I, I, even though I, I was castrated that day, I went on this deep journey of around the globe several times to learn from teachers because I didn't understand. And I needed to get it in the body where the embodiment, you know, for me came in is not just in the mind. I was so, that's why I moved away from the Tony teaching, the mindset teaching. It's like your brain is like this, your head is this IV and everything was just swirling around here, but nothing had really seeped into the body. And I figured you'd appreciate this. It wasn't until I was able to really feel my feelings and get out of my head that I was able to start really processing and really understand why I had done what I'd done. Because I logically knew, but I didn't feel it in my body. And our body is always keeping score, right? It's always letting us know. Yeah. Yeah. That's fascinating. And there's so much to unpack in that. So I'm going to go through it bit by bit. First and foremost, amazing to have a friend like Rachel and your life to call you out like that. 
tell you that you need to tap into your body. And it's almost like she knew way before you even did. And it's also interesting that so many men and women go down the route of this mindset thing, thinking that they can kind of brain their way out of it in a sense, right? It's just something I need to work on in my mind, in my mind, in my mind. And it also falls in line with this hyper-masculine energy that you're talking about that you had, which a lot of females have as well in the sense of like, okay, well, I just need to think my way out of this. I need to act my way out of this, not be my way into this, right? And I think that that's the big thing that you unlocked is a sense of saying, okay, for once I don't need to actually do something, I just need to be something. And I think that's a big, big thing that I think a lot of people can take away from that. And the thing I want to ask you as well is I want, just like you mentioned that you kind of identify with my audience in terms of the type of listener that you are from the stuff that I talk about, I'd love for my audience to now try and see themselves in you. So talk about what it is to be kind of a ma- carry that masculine energy as a female. Because it's interesting because all those things really helped you to a point. It helped you provide for your younger self, for your family. It made you succeed in business. And there are so many messages right now of like this boss babe era and everything along those lines. So can you go back to what that looked like for you so people can see themselves within you and why that become such an issue in the end? Oh gosh, yes. And thank you. That was such a great segue into, thank you for leading me there. Gosh, that just feels so good to even just the way you said that and I can just step right into it and, and ease into it. I think all women really want to be led in some way. So the way you did that, I mean, you're obviously not my partner. I've never met you before. The way you did that just calms my nervous system. I felt my whole, like my, everything just relaxed. You probably just saw that. Like my whole body went, oh, like I landed. So thank you for that. And the fact that I'm even noticing that is something I would have never noticed 10 years ago. I would have never noticed that my body relaxed in the presence of a man who is, you know, in what we like to call Zoom Redwood, like really solid, the way you're holding yourself, the way you actually are seeing me. And I know one of the things we, we had mentioned is I wanted to talk about just in general, you know, the, the energies, and that's why we have that quiz. I know you're going to put on the, in the show notes, excuse me, is about the sandysumbo.com slash quiz, which helps people like understand what their core energy is. Because just because I was a woman didn't mean I was leading in my feminine energy. In fact, I didn't even I didn't even like women per se, but the but the masculine feminine is within all of us. So if you would do me a favor, just make sure before we sign off, I want to make sure I do talk about the the U's and the C's with interaction within relationship because you mentioned that was important to your audience. Right now, I'll just talk about the essences of the energies themselves uh, because we have them both. And I don't like to talk about masculine feminine and and being uh, balanced. I like to talk about the harmonization because we need them both. I mean, the masculine energy within me got me here on time, had me do a sound check, you know, uh, an hour ago. If I was just in my feminine, I'm like, oh yeah, whatever. I'm just going to show up and, you know, no, that, 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 I mean, we, right? Me to be alone in the mountains for 10 days, you know, with my puppy. I mean, obviously I'm in my masculine a lot more than I would normally want to be. So I need to make sure before I go home to my partner that I I do something and feel into something that actually will allow me to defrag and let some of that go. So when he sees me, he's going to be able to feel me. Because if I just show up like like I have been here um, in protection mode, like at night, for example, when I'm here by myself, that that matters. So regarding your question is, you know, we need the masculine. The masculine is what is the go mode. It's going to have us, you know, get this done. It's going to allow us to basically deliver the message to, and keep us safe. The feminine, though, is what I find if we could have more men and i'm i'm imagining that this is where you are or this wouldn't have spoken to you that are very much it understand their uh, their being they understand their heart their their heart is open but they have the masculine structure that's what we need and it's just inverted for for a woman i think our feminine intuition is within all of us and that's what we miss. It's like you know whether you call it holy spirit or you call it intuition whatever you call it it is the feminine because the spirit is 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 moving. It's within us. It's like the the river behind the mountain house here. It's the masculine is the riverbed. The feminine is that ever flowing river. Whether it's from the thaw and it's super super rapidy, if that's even a word, or if it's trickling because we're you know going into season, you know whatever that is. 
that's the that's the beauty of the feminine. We are creating, we're energy, we are flow, we are that all knowing. I mean, we're life givers, literally life givers. None of us would be here if it wasn't for us. I don't care what society's saying. That's just the way I feel. So yeah, I mean, for me, again, it, it's so important. So I agree about the boss babe error. And I was one of those. I was raised on Cosmopolitan, you know, before we had the internet, all, all of that. Like, it just kind of just, you know, we don't need a man. And the women's lib movement has, has served us in so many ways. And I don't want to go backwards. Please understand me. But I do think that there's a way that we can actually coexist and be shoulder to shoulder with men and honor them and love them. And actually the gift of the feminine, a gift of a woman in her feminine is to evoke, is to evoke and sting you back to consciousness, really back to that stage three I mentioned. Like Rachel's Rachel's uh, feminine tap right into my masculine energy. Like Sandy, not a, you know, she's like, you're not living into your true potential. So it was like, so to be, to be so comfortable in your feminine energy, like understand the nuance is to also know, I need to husband myself. I need to te- bring over some masculine energy here and have the chutzpah, we'll say, I'll say the vagina for a woman to be able to say, hey, do you see what's happening? And for me, the way I teach partnership is that I, sacred union comes whenever you heal those two pieces for both, for both uh, partners. And it only takes one to really change a relationship, I find, is that we are so comfortable in our own skin as a woman, that we're able to pull the mask in and go, I'm willing to say this thing. But let's face it, many of us don't say the thing because we're afraid we're going to lose love, right? Or we're going to lose safety. And so that's why I like to go deeper in than maybe I even would have taught, honestly, Elliot, a year ago, where where is the reason why you may not tap into your, your intuition? And um, before I pause there, I want to share, this is so interesting coming to you today because I had a reel that went viral, like 18 million people literally on this reel that I released a couple weeks ago. And, and it's the most simple reel. And it just says like, where are you? I can't remember exactly. It's like, where are you? Where are you? What is your body trying to tell you? Where are you? What are you ignoring? And it was amazing to me how many people responded, obviously. Um, but but it really is about the intuition, not just for women, but for men too, is that inner knowing. And so when we tie in, you know, for, you know, for us, it's basically this center here, this beautiful and like Anjana here, this, this all knowing to our heart to basically, you know, for us, it's, it's like the feminine knowing here for you guys. It's like, obviously balls. It's like, let's all tie it together. And we need more men who are comfortable in, with, you know, not leading with their heart, but tapping into their heart before they go. Like, is this better for the world before we go? Because the masculine soap is so primal and it needs to be. Because listen, if this is saber tooth tiger is, is coming after me, you know, there is no thinking about it. You're just going to go do it. And that's for all of us. Does that help a little bit? Yeah, absolutely does. And I think a lot of people are understanding like the core dynamics of where that comes from and then the necessity because the interesting part that you're mentioning as well is that we all know where we need to be. It's just buried beneath the new narratives, which a lot of people are saying. And it's interesting that you mentioned, I don't know if it was on air or off air, but you mentioned that you are a feminist who loves men. And I think that realistically, what we're going through right now is a bit of an overcorrection. So anytime that you say something along the lines of like you uh, a woman needs to think about going to find a husband is a trigger a woman needs to be able to lean into a man and take his guidance and leadership is trigger for so many people yeah. and what i want to ask you now is that if we are triggered by those things then it's probably down to a trauma so now i want you to tap into how can we discover exactly what it is that's causing that trauma and how can we tap into that intuition because like you said when you posted that reel so many people connected with it yeah they allowed themselves to connect with it because deep down they knew that there was something there so how can we start to understand where these things are coming from why is it that anyone says something about loving men or being able to take a man's leadership do we run away i'm really (laughs) interested about why that is the common prevailing narrative that's in our generation right now wow what a what a like a hot question god is so good wow 
Wow, I love it. And notice too, like on the job coaching, like my responsiveness to you, if I was in my masculine, I would say, all right, let me answer that. And I would just go. But the way I, you see how I gave you energy, I gave you energy. I, I edified you with the question alone. Now, was that a show? No, that's just who I am. Do you understand what I'm saying? I mean, that's just who I am to know, like to honor you, to edify you, to share what that did for me because the masculine, all of us wants to do better. And I guarantee you, you go back and go, what about that question that made her like respond that way? And you'll be more apt to do it again. Make sense? And so I say for women, like the more that you are in front of your partner and he's distracted by, I don't have my phone with me, but he's like, he's distracted with his phone. Can you bring more energy than your, than his phone? Can you bring more energy than the ball game? And it's not just, you know, this is a great time to talk about the, the three C's. It's not by complaining. It's not by controlling. It is not by closing your energy. It's actually by doing exactly what I just did there. And trust me, that is a learned response because I was, we call it Zoom Redwood in my, in my, in, with my women. Like, are you in Zoom Redwood all day? And if you are, can you put a sheepskin under your tush? Can you light a candle? Can you be in masculine? Because you need to, you know, we need to be able to get things done, but can you bring pleasure back in? Um, and I know you asked me about trauma and I, I will get to that. I promise. Again, this is the beauty of being with a, a strong masculine being like yourself. Cause I'm like, I artistically, I can, I can flow within that. Do you see what I'm saying? And so I'm letting that your audience see, cause I've been on podcasts before where I'm, it doesn't feel like this. I'll just put it like that. Now understand women generally will complain and control and close their energy when they feel these two things or don't feel unseen, unheard, un misunderstood, and unsafe. And safety is very different for a, a more masculine being than a woman because we are always looking over our sh shoulder, so to speak, right? And because we know we're, it's just, it's primal. You guys, I mean, more hunters, hunters, like the masculine doing, and then we're more like gathering, that's is an eight for us. That's why we we we're, we're more communal or more tribal as women. So I just want to like touch on that. But to answer your question more specifically um, about trauma is, I think it starts with. I mean, I love Dr. Joe's work, and I I met him originally when I worked with Tony years ago. By the way, before he started working on his voice and his command, Dr. Joe Dispenza. Like if you listen to Dr. Joe from years ago, he was a little more meek in the way he. You know, I did his meditations and I can remember that was like a year after I actually had had my intervention and started this deep journey for myself because I had a very successful, I had several successful businesses, but I moved for more business coaching. Although I love business coaching, I still use it and do it. And most women that work with me will, will end up, gosh, they end up starting another business or, you know, tripling their numbers and 10 axing is so fun because they're actually doing it with less energy because they're tapping into their intuition and realizing that they are, that they are actually missing out on what the feminine leadership means. So anyway, so let me just read about Dr. Joe, because maybe you'll understand what I'm saying is I was just starting to learn the work. So you have to be careful who you learn from. I, my goal now is to make this work so accessible in our everyday. Because when I just first started doing this work, and there's a lot of teachers teaching this now, masculine and feminine energetics embodiment wasn't popular 10 years ago when I first got involved. But it was like, it was so it was so black and white, especially the way like, Tony would teach it too. And so that's why I moved away from that teaching. I needed to feel it. You know, so with, with Dr. Joe, I, it was, his voice was meek and I was looking to be commanded. I was looking to be claimed with someone's energy, like penetrated with somebody's energy. And I don't mean just sexually, I mean, obviously that's fantastic, but I needed to feel that feeling like I felt when someone, like you just did, you didn't say it in a big Tony bold voice, but your energy alone rolled out the red carpet for me to respond to it. And the feminine is always looking to respond to something. That's why, you know, when I drink my water now, I literally will use the five senses. I'm like, I feel the cold, the cold glass. You know, I can taste, taste the effervescence of the water, this bubble water. And it allows us to get back in the body. So anyway, so Dr. Joe now has done things with voice. We gave him feedback and he's amazing and commanding so many people, but it had to come 
from his balls, basically. So I'll just go back to what I was going to start with him. I believe in quantum physics, and I think it, everything starts with awareness. So to answer your question about how do you know if this trauma, where does this come from? Where does the belief come from? Like, just have the awareness al alone that you're the common denominator in all your failed relationships, whether it's business, your, your relationship with your body, whatever it is. Your home even. I think our home is a living, breathing entity. And to have a relationship with that as well, right? Um, have a relationship with your business. There's so much there where you and I could un unpack. That's why I love this work within business because it, it, it just everything, how we do anything is how we do everything, period. It's the space of under, understanding and not having to understand. And so gu guide me back, guide me back to, to the question around trauma is like being aware. Like something doesn't feel right, like the real we just talked about. Something doesn't look right. Maybe somebody, maybe you're so blind to it because it's become normal. Again, the brain wants to keep you safe, not happy. So this is why people can stay in situations that are toxic or they're overeating or whatever they're doing. And that just feels like home to them. Or maybe they're from the South and everything's like, you know, greased out or whatever. I mean, it's like, it becomes, we all have an emotional home and that's why we can get addicted to our problems because it literally releases, I mean, it releases some type of uh, uh, feel good, serotonin, dopamine in our system. Familiarity, comfort. 100%. But that's, that's why you can also get addicted to love. You can get addicted to toxic relationships. You can get addicted to exercise. I was an exercise bulimic. That was my, my thing. And no, they never heard of something like that before, back when I was in all those treatment centers. And no one, Elliot, ever talked to me about why was I doing that in the first place? They just kept talking to me about like calories and exercise. And you don't have to tell somebody with an eating disorder, anything about that. It wasn't until Tony started talking to me about, I mean, through his tapes, cassette tapes, by the way, why was I doing that in the first place? What was I running from? Like, what was I running from? Or what was I running towards? So I take all that teaching and the work that I do. But first off is awareness. And then, and then normally, you know, it's, I think it takes having somebody else, whether it's a mentor, a teacher, you know, a friend like Rachel, that's like, wait a minute. And everything's an energetic match. I mean, we're always transmitting I and mean, we're always transmitting something, whether we're men or women, and it's all frequency, it's all energy. And the, the person I am today, if I was ever, God forbid, single again, is a very different version that I would, I, of, of a partner that I would attract it years ago, including, you know, five years ago when John and I met, you know? So if you tap into sacred union, you can trigger each other. If you're growth minded, you go and find people that can serve you and, and you come back versus just tapping out. But First thing is awareness. And that's why I love that simple quiz we have. And, and listen, I, I can tell you for me, when I really tapped into the embodiment was I realized from my teacher who loved me dearly, I was addicted to being disappointed. I got energy from being disappointed and, and my breakups because every time I'd have a breakup, it's almost like when you jump in the pool, like, you know, feet first, you tap the bottom of the pool and you, you come back up. Oh, there we go. Uh, you tap, you come back up. I would always come back stronger. I would always come back. I'd make more money. I would learn a new lesson, right? Isn't that wild? I would learn a new lesson. There is a reason why we do everything. Then I'm such a geek. I mean, I like to find out, find all that stuff out. Some people are like just, just accepting it. I want to know why. So our problems give us purpose and it's fascinating. I am in my my advanced students, we talk about the kink, the shadow work, like why do we do what we do? And generally, there's a turn on. There literally is a turn on. If you really get in touch with your body, you're like, oh my God, failure really turns me on. And then we go deep into like, what does that mean? All the ways are you actually sabotaging failure? That's a lot. There's a lot. But I just want to like leave it right there and see what you have to say. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's fascinating because I've never actually heard of the concept of being addicted to problems and disappointment purely to find the learning. And as you mentioned, like everyone knows when you come out of a relationship, I would say for maybe eight out of 10 people, they go and do the work, right? They go and do, they go go crazy on the gym or they go tap into personal development or something along those lines right. or they do something to prove that person 
like as to why that they were the right partner. They shouldn't have left them or they should have been good enough to stay around or whatever it is. And it's funny because of, you see it in relationships all the time. People become comfortable. They stop working on what made them become attractive to that person in the first place, whether it's what they did with their what? personality, what they did with their physique, their business, whatever it might have been, they take their foot off the gas. So it makes sense to me that you would then say, well, actually, let me try and get to a point where this relationship is going to end. So I get the opportunity to go reinvent myself again, because I know I'm going to come back 10 times better. Right. And isn't it crazy how we can't trigger that within ourselves to do it within the relationship? It's only to cause ourselves some form of discomfort, sabotage in order to rise up again. I've never heard that before, but it makes complete sense. It does. Because again, it's about the, the, the chemical that is released in the brain. And so we can get addicted. I mean, I was, I really was, I mean, it was, it, it was fascinating to me. And so I was addicted to this, I almost a pain of being disappointed. And so my teacher, I'll share a quick embodiment was like, when's the last time you felt childlike joy? Because the feminine is curious. Like we're curious. And I believe there's 10 women, there's 10 women, and we could have a whole nother conversation about this another time. There's 10 women. There's also 10 men that live in each men or women. And, uh, and I, there's they, literally there's 10 different personalities. And I'm not talking about the typical archetypes, the way I like to teach this. And there is that part of us that's so joyful. And let's face it, I think most men, they want more energy. They want more feminine. They're like you know, working hard all day and they come home to the same you know, there's nothing there to play with. That's why, you know, so many people come to work with me after 25, 30 years of relationship and their partner may be going through the midlife crisis. We like to call it the tunnel in our world. And they're wondering, why did he go for the sports car? Why all of a sudden he's going to the gym? Why is he wanting the younger girl or whatever? Because he wants energy. He's craving energy. So when I teach women that, like in the sacred respect course, which I know we're going to have a way to give the, the, your audience like 10% off of that too. And it's a super reasonable course anyway. It's all about the energetics, not fake. Now, I want to say this too. One of my certifications, I, I had the privilege of studying 100 men. And 99 out of the 100 men in, in, our, in one of these theses said they loved a strong woman who was voluntarily vulnerable. That blew my mind. What they were saying is essentially is just to clarify it is they were, these were healthy men. These weren't men that like needed a woman and need them. Right. It was more of, they could take care of themselves. Like me being up here by myself. I'm not calling my husband every, every like, you know, minute, like how do I start a fire or that kind of stuff. Well, that was because there was a gas stove. I could hit a button. I have actually called him to text and ask him to tell me how to start a fire, but in the past, and he sent me a 10 step way to start a fire, literally the Eagle Scout that he is, God bless him. I was so, I mean, it's, it's, honestly, it was this darling moment. I'm so grateful. My friends were like, wow. Anyway, but coming back to, gosh, what was I saying? Can you remind me what I was saying? <laughs> yeah, of course. You were talking about the 100 men who said they wanted a yeah. strong woman who was voluntarily vulnerable. That we trust our intuition so much that we can feel into is this person someone that we can ease into his leadership? Can we lean into his leadership? So there, again, there's so much here where we could talk for that even more. So I thought that was so interesting though for me. And, and you know, and even as John and I like to say, we've gone through our own, my husband, our dark night of the soul this last year because we live, I teach in my own experience. And that's something that makes me very, very trustable, I believe. And sometimes it's uncomfortable. So when, when I was, you know, I was starting to date again. One of the intentions I had was this partner would be okay being my muse. Our relationship would be our muse. And not necessarily him per se, but the relationship itself. Because I think life is our playground. You know, this relationship is a Petri dish to get really aware. It's so good. And so again, I mean, not everybody who works with me wants to go that deep in the deep end. My thing is if I can help women just go expand an inch more in their expression and, and deepen just an inch down to the earth and their masculine, the world would be a better place. Most women will come and work with me and work with me for a year or so because they're like, wow, okay, let's do this. Let's do that. And life becomes so much more flavorful because you see things through different glasses and, and men are just blown away because we are so different. I mean, we are very, very different uh, and than, than you guys. I mean, clearly, but so many women want to be just, just like, and uh, a, a good way to talk about um, 
just society. I remember I was in India with Tony actually, and I was on the treadmill. Again, just started doing this work. And I remember there was a Mean Girl too. You guys don't even know what I'm talking about. The ladies will know. Mean Girls is a movie with Lindsay Lohan from years ago. But they had a Mean Girl 2, a sequel of all things. And it wasn't Lindsay Lohan, but it was this it was this really cute gal who had like these, you know, these these leather cuffs here and she had her jeans and her white beater t shirt and and she was in high school. Her dad was like a mechanic and she was like working on the car and her, and she had the hots for this guy and he, he wanted to take her on a date and he went to open up her car door. She's like, oh, I can do it or something like that. And I was like, wow, how many times, and I'll ask all of you this, has someone gone to open up a door for you or help you put your luggage up? And you're like, I got it. I got it. And you're robbing yourself in that moment of, of honoring the person in front of you, just like I was honoring you with, with sharing a heartfelt, you know, thank you. And you would have known if I was just bullshitting you, if I was just trying to like, you know, warm you up. No, it was heartfelt, right? So anyway, there's so many nuances here. I mean, we could, you know, talk about it for days, but the, I believe everything's a moment to moment practice. So I wanted to get people outside of Sedona, goddess circles and outside of LA and, you know, outside of London, and everything else. And I said, how can we practice in our home? And I don't mean just like before COVID, but even the way I'm here with you, as I mentioned, some of my practices here, how will I even end this call? Well, I was like, all right, I got to get on the road. I got to check out before housekeeping comes and I just throw everything here or I will allow it to be very, very delicious can I allow this to be a delicious experience? Because I don't know about, well, maybe not you, but ladies that are listening, I am a woman who must be experienced. Like I want my partner to experience me, not tolerate me. Like he sees me and my wildness and he's like, interesting. All right. And uh, not someone who wants to control me. And, and I'll, I'll admit this. I mean, I've been, I've been known to be a lot for a lot of people, which is how I know I ended up in an abusive relationship before because he wanted my energy and I wanted what I thought was his stability. It was more like toxic masculine than just like sacred masculine. And uh, yeah, so I know we're running out of time, but I, I, I maybe I can, may, maybe we can like extend this conversation or some of the resources that I, that I have can can help deepen this conversation for your audience. Yeah, as we transition towards the back end of the conversation, I think a great place to go now to touch on would be relationships. You've mentioned this throughout the course of our conversation and obviously touched on your partnership with John as well. And I'm curious to get an idea now of obviously all these things that we've gone through today has come to a point of saying, okay, we need to let go. We need to tap into this feminine energy to make room for the masculine energy to come through as well. What is that process of letting go and how can we prepare ourselves to be the best person that we can be, both men and women, to allow the right partner to show up as yeah. well? Because I think that that's the key to success. Anytime anyone asks me, because I'm in a very successful relationship, I'll say myself, is that anyone that will, who will ask me like, well, how do I find that partner? How do I get that type of relationship? I'm like, if you're not in one right now, the best thing you can do is make sure that when that person arrives, you are the person that you need to be in order to welcome them with open arms, to be ready to accept them with your absolute wholeness. And you should be focusing on what they're doing. You should be focusing on everything that you're 100%. doing. So I'd love to get your take on how we can prepare to be in that type of relationship that we all deep down really crave. Yeah. Well, again, great question. Congratulations to you and your partner. First off, I actually love it when people come to me and they're single. You know, I, I think it's like a perfect way to have an open canvas. And, you know, I, I take women through what I call a masculine cleanse, where they, I, I help them heal the relationship, you know, with their own masculine. Most people think, so you don't have sex. Well, not necessarily. We get to determine what that is for you because women don't even understand how much they actually are using their feminine wiles to get something. It's a very manipulative, which is toxic feminine as well. So there's a lot of nuances there. But to answer your question, and that's such a masculine question, the way you said that can give me a couple steps of how you can do the X, Y, and Z. And it's, it's, so, it's like, it's so good. And it's, it's so good. And it's so not the one, two, three, because everybody's so different. But, but you are right. I mean, it's to become the person that will, Freak, be, be of the same frequency of somebody that can come in. And I tell you, if you would have asked me this question 
two years ago, I would have answered it this way. But that's why when someone's working with me, it's like, understand your childhood trauma, understand why you do what you do. It's not just about she should be five foot six and blonde and adventurous and an entrepreneurial spirit and all of that. Like I said, bake a cake for a reason, because I don't love to bake because I'm super feminine. I don't like to measure things and I don't want to like, and you can't like a cake won't rise if you don't have the right ingredients. You can't just say a little dabble of this or dabble of that. So in our world, we call it bake a cake. And so what is the perfect the recipe for you? Because someone that says entrepreneurial spirit, what the hell does that mean? And I've been in a space with that too. That was very important to me, but I know now it's like someone who's already established in their entrepreneurship. Someone who, you know, like somebody says financially, uh, financially sound. Well, what the hell does that mean? You know, because it's going to be different for everyone. You know, I want someone who's, who's spiritual. What, and we've all done this. I mean, let's face it. But I mean, let's be specific about that. So I take you down. I use meditation and theta healing and things that clear out the beliefs. So this vessel that everyone's in is very clear to then get the downloads of what it is that you really want. And then I will challenge you. It's like, okay, so I mean, even to be with a man who's comfortable with your success, that if you are coming at very successful, I think it takes a very strong man who's very comfortable with who the hell he is to be able to support a woman and also to be so strong that when she comes home, whether it's like out of the other office because we're working at home together, or she comes home and she's still in masculine, get it done energy that he is like, hey, babe, I see you. I've got you. And if she's still still being, you know, in her mode, I mean, to be able to you know, like we talked about before the call, is like to come up to her and look her right in the eye and say, hey, I've got you. And 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 that energy, that feeling of being claimed is something that I have. I haven't met one woman yet that has not wanted that. At first, they're like, no, I don't want that. No. I'm like, well, let's talk about that. I mean, seriously, when we, but, but it, it, it does, it, it takes a while sometimes. Like it takes a while sometimes. So it may take a woman working with me for a couple of months to to defrag. Like, why does she feel that way in the first place? Why won't she let her body feel what it feels like to lean in? For me, I just assumed everybody was going to leave. I just assumed they were all going to leave because that's, and, and by the way, we literally, there's a process that we do. We literally can create the very thing we're running away from. Our brain, our body will literally create it over and over again. What we wanted in childhood, we will run. Like I said, I'll never get a divorce. I'll never get blah, blah, blah. and I and you and you will literally create. We're all patterns until you upgrade the pattern. You will create that again. You want a woman who doesn't criticize you all the time. You will find the very woman who will criticize you all the time. And this is where the th- third stage of sacred union is. You bring it to the surface. And you actually, the shadow side, you do your own work and then you love each other so much that you won't allow that to happen. And that's why it takes really special teachers, I think, to, to bring that forth. Because when a man comes to me and says, it was actually, I remember years ago, it was actually one of my attorneys. He said, you know, my wife is leaving me after 20 something years. And I'm like, when's the last time you pushed her up against the wall, put her hands above her head and kissed her with abandon? He's like, she would hate that. I went, try it. And he did a couple of my practices and they are, they, they did not separate. They are together. It was more than that, obviously, but because she didn't trust him. She's like, get away. But he, what he understood was he just, they had gotten in the humdrum of life. And I think that we have to be intentional, just like going to the gym. Like, what is the outcome that you want? I mean, mindset is in here somewhere. Like, what is it that you want to create? How do you want to feel at the end of the day? Like, how did I love? How did I live? How did I matter? Every day, if you know you're going to ask the, yourself those questions, whether you're in partnership or not, you're going to live very differently than if you're like, yeah, whatever happens, you're so in your feminine, like whatever. And I'll say this too, as we're going into the end of the year, I don't know when this is going to be recorded, but let's just say, well, sorry, uh, out there for the world, hopefully sooner than later, when a woman puts like a man or a relationship on their vision board, right? It's like, they, oh, I want a relationship. It's like, that's great. But they say, Claim, I will be in a relationship this year. There's a very different way. That's a very masculine re- approach. Put it on your board. And then to your point, let's reverse the veneer. Who do you need to be in order to attract that relationship? But besides that, like, 
what do you really want? And most women, when I say, what is, what is your desire? They think I'm talking about sexual energy, but I'm not. I mean, of course that's there too. And I'm like, like, what turns you on? Why does life not turn you on? Like, why? So again, a lot to unpack, but it's so much more than, than, than the list. Because I like to say, what are you willing to tolerate now? I mean, like if someone's going through a divorce right now, for example, and you and you, 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 you it's you find out his wife is in Bali and she won't return calls or whatever. Like I would, I honestly would say, never get in a relationship with someone who's still married. Period. Whether I just left their partner or they're two years down the road, that's just me. Of course, there's some little some threads we could pull on, but nevertheless, like I can tolerate that now, but I'd rather be alone than be with a partner who is or isn't this. Right. So there's like, there's two parts to it. Yeah. And this is, this is sacred union with yourself first and then decide what it is you want to put out there. Yeah. I think that's super powerful. I think that that's the biggest switch that so many people can make. It's that not what am I going for, but what am I willing to tolerate? What am I willing to accept? It's not about do they like me? It's about do I like them? And I think that that comes from a lot of internal work, a lot of yes. self security, self confidence as well. And almost like being very intentional. I think so many people end up in relationships off the back of generally their insecurities, right? Okay, well, someone's yeah. chosen me. So amazing. I'm going to just stick with them. Or this is safe. It's comfortable. I don't know what's on the other side of this. So maybe I should just stick with what's, you know, feeling good. And I think that that's maybe one of the biggest traps that we get into. And then, as you mentioned, people get 20, 25 years down the line and they're like, well, this doesn't feel like a sacred union ship. It feels just like I'm hanging out with this person that we have a few things in common. And mainly it's just the fact that we've lived together for the past 20 years, which is absolutely not the relationship I want. And it's absolutely not the relationship I don't think anyone really wants deep down. It's just what they've chosen to accept ultimately because it does come down to a choice. But yeah, I think that, like you said, there is so much to unpack here, but we are coming to, up to the yeah. end. So I think there has to be a round two here. So I really truly think there is. So that being said, I do want to come to my final couple of questions. And the big one I have for you is what impact do you want to have on the world with the work that you do? Mm, 12 million lives impacted indirectly and directly through Sacred She, meaning that, you know, me sharing with you here is going to impact someone. Impact, even I never meet anyone from your audience. Also, I think the how the children will be impacted the children that we're raising and and to teach moms that they can be even stay at stay at home moms the impact because mothering mothering is a masculine energy mother is not that blew my mind too so i think the impact teachers for example that that work with me how they view little boys and and helping them i mean we we don't want to crush their spirits if they want to help us with our with putting something away you know like no 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 it's not just women that are going at the airport. It's like there's little spirits that want to help men. Masculine wants to serve. The masculine wants to serve. That's an eight in them. And we we have we have squashed that. So the more that we can give y'all opportunities, no matter what age you are, to serve us, allow you to lead us. That's the thing, is that most people are scared of men. But the truth is, if we really know who you are. Then you get to decide, just like strong women who are voluntarily vulnerable. A strong woman is not a ball buster. A strong woman is not a, necessarily a boss babe. A strong woman, really what I define it as, is someone who knows who the heck she is and will do whatever she needs to do to like honor that within herself. You don't even have to protect it. It's more of like your inner knowing protects you because those people that aren't in the same frequency, you, they won't even come near you. Now, and again, like I mentioned, like last five years for me, I've been an evolution. I talk about relationship, you know, like two millimeters different than I would have five years ago because of what I've learned in my relationship with my partner. Would have done things differently. And I love that I can bring that to people like you and your audience, because if I can help people collapse time, energy, and money and heartbreak and, and take my experience, uh, then I want to bring that back to you. And that, so that's the impact that I want to make. It's a small feed. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, just a, a few 12 million people. But I think that it's beautiful in the sense of what you said is that it will have a generational impact as well, right? The people that you're working with today may already have kids. They may not have kids, but they will. Yeah. And I think that the next generation is going to benefit from all this healing that we're doing, all this work that we're doing. And that puts the responsibility back on men as well. I think we've focused a lot on what females can do today. But I also think a big aspect is the immense aspect of making sure that they take responsibility for being the type of man that 
allows a woman to be her full self as well and show yeah. the world that there isn't just if the world isn't for the toxic masculinity i think it's just both of us coming to a center piece of like a little bit of trust in the male a little bit of trust in allowing the woman to open up and i think that that's what's going to create them the best type of synergy so i love that i think it's a beautiful note to end on and where is the best place for people to find you where is the best place for people to do the quiz you didn't touch on the use you touched on the c so i don't know if you want to throw that in before we do wrap up yeah no i think it was like unseen unsafe unheard and and misunderstood so when a woman feels that, she will automatically, uh, innately, primarily go back more in her masculine. And so there are, it's actually easier to, to get everyone in their body more than you think, but we can talk about that next time. Instagram is a great place, Sandy Sembler. SandySembler.com slash quiz is the quiz. We're offering sacred respect to your audience and that's sacred with a K. So I know you're going to have that in the show notes so they can have that discount. And I have one-on-one mentorships that, that's me obviously in with you. Uh, my sisterhood is my signature program and we're taking applications now. And that's around 20 women and they're working with me directly in a five month container. And I have the, some self-study courses like that sacred respect we mentioned, but it's just such a gift to be able to witness women who have done the work in their everyday life, like even how they're cooking in the kitchen, not having to go to a workshop necessarily, although I love workshops and I love leading them. But I want women to be able to feel comfortable with who they are and men to feel like, to, to learn to know who they are and really understand us because we're so different. Yeah, love it, Sandy. We'll make sure that everything is in the show notes below, but it's truly been a pleasure. Thank you so much yeah. for your time and your wisdom today. I truly appreciate it. Thank you. I'm so grateful.